All right, good evening, folks. Welcome back here to a uh, Tuesday night. It is 10.02 p.m. California time here, November 18th, 2025 is the date. Uh, seismograph stations there across the globe look quiet for now. The Bay Area seen some earthquake activity here uh, earlier uh, last night and this morning on the uh, Calaveras Fault, potentially over here on the Pleasanton Fault as well. This region's been uh, swarming quite a bit just outside of San Ramon. Bunch of ones and twos in there, the largest, a 3.3 so far just from last night. Also another three-pointer striking down here. Outside the San Luis, or four-pointer, excuse me, San Luis Obispo area, this originally coming in as a 4.5 earthquake. So we do have some adjustment going on out here across California, including one right on the Hayward Fault. Of course, that's a major area that is overdue in terms of the regular reoccurrence interval of a large earthquake on the Hayward Fault. Uh, further down south here into Southern California, a little spotty. Uh, we do have some earthquake activity in the microquake range, but really nothing major that I can see for now. No unusual activity. I guess uh, this up here around the Universal City area, that's kind of a little odd region. Got uh, some earthquake activity out there on the unnamed possible fault in North Hollywood that uh, earlier this year, I think it was last, maybe last year, there was a decent swarm of earthquake activity on it. So it's definitely a fault system. They say a possible fault in North Hollywood, but uh, looks like there's some activity stirring up there today. In the uh, very small micro quake range, notice some activity here offshore. Off into the Blanco Fracture Zone once again. That was early this morning for a 3.9. Uh, taking a quick glance here at the Cascadia Slow Slip Event Map. Shows 148 epicenters of slow slip events there. Uh, mainly across the southern end, although we're getting a little bit up here across the Vancouver Island range. So I think you're starting to fill back in on the northern region. Uh, I guess we could see the middle section here filling as well. Either way, this is adding further stress and strain up across the locked area of that subduction zone. Uh, up into Yellowstone National Park, they do have a couple smaller earthquakes out here in the last 24 hours, but we will double check that for uh, uh, verification purposes here just to make sure that everything is transparent here between the USGS and the public. Uh, I like to go over here to the seismograph stations and uh, just... You know, look at these recorded ones. There's a couple of those earthquakes that were uh, out there in the afternoon and early morning. No big swarm, no magma movement, no doom and gloom on the menu for Yellowstone for now. Uh, one earthquake up into the beautiful state of Kansas. It looks like Dorrance, Kansas, out around the Smoky Hills. Not Tennessee, but Kansas Smoky Hills. 2.7 coming in right now. Uh, about three miles deep or so. And it's been associated with this Wilson Lake area. If we go back the last 30 days, there's been a little swarm of activity out here in the 2 and the 3 range. If we were to go back the last few months, more activity would show up here on the map. So I'm not for sure what's going on out here uh, in the Kansas region. I don't think there's any uh, oil field operations. Obviously, there's some hills and whatnot. Kansas is not super duper flat all the way like people think. Trust me, I know I've been out there myself and it's a beautiful state. I do like it. Uh, but yeah, some activity stirring up, and it's really not in a major um, hazard zone in terms of the USGS potential earthquake areas. In fact, it's in one of the lowest out there across uh, the majority of the country. So a little interesting activity. Maybe some older faults out there that uh, have not been discovered yet. Uh, oil field still rocking and rolling. A little earthquake over here outside of Denver. Um... That's from this morning, a little 2.1. Colorado does get some earthquake activity. Hit and miss, but uh, occasionally earthquakes like that pop up. Nothing big. Uh, let's take a look here at the global view of things. See how we're looking here on the uh, on that map. Some further activity over here across Japan, it looks like. A five-pointer. Fairly new. Nothing yet across the Nankai Trop. And pretty quiet there. Not even a single earthquake along that area in between the uh, Japan region Nankai trough down to Taiwan it's pretty quiet uh, but do want to keep an eye on that the uh, crunch zone out here around the Philippines southward a little light in terms of earthquake activity nothing big some twos and threes um, the Mediterranean region 
some older activity starting to let out and let off a little bit in terms of earthquake activity and not seeing anything big going on out there for now but you know occasionally these swarms pop up out of the blue and i do think that is leading to something bigger in the area most of the newer activity as you can see is clustered out here across the middle america trench affecting areas around the caribbean plate notice that five pointer coming in here uh, just north of venezuela that is a 5.0 earlier this evening uh, previous to that there was a 5.4 off the coast here costa rica that is associated with the uh, southern end of the middle america trench here now we're getting a lot of activity stirring up in this region it looks like just judging by this huge cluster on the map on the globe on the globe excuse me uh, which will ultimately apply further strain out here across this area of the Caribbean plate. That's why we're seeing some elevated activity out here around it. So just keep an eye on that. Puerto Rico not seeing any major movement, but I do expect that to pick up with the increase in strain out here uh, around that region of the uh, planet, the Caribbean plate. South America uh, looks like a four-pointer, some other smaller quakes out there. Nothing big, but that is definitely our area of interest out here right now where things are starting to show you know like some decent uptick uh, out across the new zealand area some movement across the kermadec trench here nothing big going on there across new zealand uh let's see alaska it almost seems like uh, every time i turn around here on my earthquake app uh get an earthquake notification for earthquake up in alaska 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 there's a lot going on up there uh definitely a bunch of earthquakes here above the 2.5 level today uh, nothing big. The large is a 4.5 from last night, but we are starting to see some increasing movement, even way up north. Uh, might want to keep an eye on this area of the subduction zone that is quite active out here. When, you, when we see a lot of activity up inland, away from the plate boundary, that means that, uh, well, it means we should probably keep an eye here on the plate boundary, the subduction zone itself, um, which is, uh, of course, capable of producing some big time mega quakes out here. That is a major subduction zone. Of course, had a seven-pointer out here around the Sandpoint, Alaska recently. 8.1 back in 2021. A number of large events out here. Um, but just uh, there's a, a fairly high slip rate in this area. So it doesn't take a long, long time to build up strain out there in that area. But it's active. Look at that. A lot of movement happening up there right now. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, still seeing some earthquake activity out here. Just a, a cluster of quakes out here across the southeastern edge of the Big Island. More so than normal, including some, looks like, migrational quake activity down here across the East Rift Zone. I'm starting to wonder if maybe we'll see uh, some, some further uh, volcanic activity down across that area. Let's go see what we got here for the latest uh, Kilauea update. I know we're waiting on the eruption up there across the summit area, which could uh, come here in a number of days. We'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Um, deformation data here. By the way, member drawing in two days. Member drawing in two days. Uh, we're getting up there in terms of inflation. No offset yet in terms of any you know, migration of that... Um, magma that's building up below uh, but there's definitely been some interesting earthquake activity out here you can see it all across this region uh, let's see and it's a little light here in terms of the uh, the instruments out here to monitor that the, the uh, inflation out here there's really not a whole lot I guess there's some there's some GPS stations right there this actually shows well that just goes back to last year it doesn't even cover this year so that does us no good um yeah but not a whole lot of tilt meters out here i wish there was a little bit more there's one down here but that's not really showing anything Let's see what we got up here that's kind of going up a little bit and instead steadily uh leveling out but if you uh, it doesn't really show the um, the eruption activity of a Kilauea volcano. Uh, this is a ways away, but there is some a uh, little bit of migration in terms of inflation going on east of that uh, Kilauea volcano. This one definitely pick up the uh, the inflation happening underneath the summit area. 
So we'll watch for that. Uh, we should see an eruption up there across Kilauea Volcano here in a, in a couple more days or so, maybe a few more. Uh, let's see what else is going on out here. There's uh, another 2.1 up there in Alaska. Just things are really busy up there. Uh, the largest magnitude here so far in the last 24 hours, fairly light. Well, that's going to go to the uh, 5.4 off the coast here, Costa Rica. Nothing big going on there for now, but I'll definitely keep an eye on the Middle America Trench. Now, flaring activity, that uh, definitely has dropped there into the B flare category. Let's take a look here at 4284. I had my hopes up, but it looks like this one is not going to cooperate here. Uh, still fairly stable in terms of magnetic complexity. I don't see anything major going on. Uh, so that flare threat is probably going to stay lowered at a 15% uh, chance there for M flare, X flare around 1% chance or so. And C flare up around 75% chance. Nothing uh, big going on there on the sun. <clears throat> as far as aurora activity goes, yeah, there's nothing in the forecast. Uh, coming up here, far as any major storms go, of course, Southern California getting in on some more rain. We do have one more quick mover of a storm. Uh, that we're not going to expect much there, accumulation in terms of rainfall here across Northern California, but it will be a little bit. Southern California, it looks like it may get a little bit more down there from that cutoff low. And then after that, well, the patterns tend to change out here a little bit. We've got some cold air dipping down across the Great Lakes states, even further down across the eastern portion of the country. Uh, just interesting uh, winter setup going on here. You know, everything's always changing out here. The patterns are. Uh, but uh, a lot of cold air coming down here, it looks like, in December. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. We'll see you guys out here in the morning for the uh, Wednesday morning update. Take care. Have a wonderful night out there.